Yo, what's poppin? Welcome to Broman Brapsody. This is where we review cars and motorcycles. Today we are back at Motorcycles of Greensboro and we have the professor. Professor, how Abro, are you? Welcome back, brother. How yes. are you? Live in the dream, sir. Yes. Live in the yes, dream. Yes, you are. Yes, uh, bro, I don't know if we want to cross the oceans. That means the Atlantic and then the Pacific, but we're going to Japan. All right. Yeah. Japan, yep. land of the rising sun. The, yeah, and, and hey, look at this. The first Beautiful. warm day of spring 2022. Doesn't get Land of the rising sun, here yes, we are. Yes, sir. And this is the 2020 Kawasaki Z900. In today's episode, we're gonna learn a little bit about this bike and Kawasaki. We have the professor, of course, why not? <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, I'll walk around, show you some features of this bike, take it out on the road, share my thoughts about it, talk about the cost of ownership, and assign it a Broman score. But before we do any of that, if you're new to Broman, you gotta give us a like and hit that subscribe button. The professor and I put out these, yeah, we put out these content all the time. And the more you guys like it and subscribe, the more I can bother him like, hey, professor, what are you doing next? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, it's your boy, bro. And I am your Broman. Interesting thing about Kawasaki is not only have they been a very successful motorcycling company that include uh, you know street bikes, off-road, and all sorts of stuff like mm -hmm. that, but their primary real revenue stream is huge industry, you know, industrial machinery, uh, yeah, land movers, yeah. and stuff like that, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, that's why it's called Kawasaki Heavy Industries. Industry. Regardless of how much it how little of a part of their real business it was, they always put in a real wholehearted effort into producing the best that they could with what they had. With the Kawasaki has always been there. They've always offered a very good, high quality product. Yes, the fit and finish is not quite the European. We'll have yeah. to admit that. But neither is the price point. Right? Correct. It's, it's a really a, good yeah, value it's proposition. It's amazing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you get the performance, uh, you know, you get the features in general. Yeah. <laughs> in general. Yeah, in general. And you have a bike that you can ride and enjoy for many, many, many years because the quality is there. The quality so is there. the inline four of this bike is um, a great, great, great top end engine. Yeah. Uh, inline fours have always been known for top end prowess, would you say, or power delivery? The power delivery and the smoothness. Yeah. Now, the thing that it does leave you with a little bit to be desired is the fact that if you're at 3,000 RPMs yeah, in fourth gear, nothing. yeah, you're tap dancing on the shifter. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas the V configurations or the boxer engines, man, it doesn't matter if you're in second gear or in sixth gear, you just, just, you just twist, twist the, the throttle and, and off you go, that tractor motor kicks in and off, and then there you go. <laughs> this one, you gotta wait a little bit for the RPMs to get there, but once you once you do, it rewards you with the performance mm -hmm. that you want, if, if that's what you're after. For the guy that who's looking for that top end rush, uh, the inline four definitely has, has its ticket. Yeah. Now this is a naked bike, the super naked bike class, right? Yeah. This, these are super bikes for the street. You're yes. not you're not leaning over. You're not bent over. Yeah, you're sitting upright. Much more affordable. Much more affordable. And I'm guessing much more insurable, like lower insurance costs than a super sport. Well, that is the reason why motorcycle manufacturers is particularly started in Europe. It was for the customer, for the motorcyclist who wanted to have the performance, but his insurance premiums are going up so high, particularly in Europe again, mm -hmm. uh, that it was not allowing that motorcyclist to longer afford to own the motorcycle that he loved. Mm. So the idea came to be that you detune it a little bit, maybe give it a little bit more uh, mid-range oh. punch and not as much top end. Uh, some of the suspension components not be so top so top notch. Mm -hmm. uh, so then you would bring down the cost of the bike, people would crash it less, insurance yeah. companies would not pay out as many claims, therefore the insurance premium was not as high and they were still able to sell the motorcycle. Even then it's got a fair amount of technology to it. You have ABS, you have rider modes on this bike. Yes. And yes. you have a nice TFT screen. The riding position is pretty comfortable. I don't know how to describe that headlamp. It looks unique. You have turn signals mounted on top. And here's the cool thing about those lights though. When you turn them on, they have little lights on the side. The wheels match the body panels and the trellis frame. There's blue, 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 blue 
I like it. I love the color blue, so anything blue, I'm down. And they have dual 320 millimeter discs. That's a liquid cool inline four. You have your radiator and the four pipes going down. The thing that, uh, that's a very Z phenomenon or a Kawasaki Z phenomenon are these lines and these designs. This little cutout here, it's unique to this bike and you can see part of the frame, the trellis frame here as well. Now moving down, you have that single exhaust on one side. You have an adjustable monoshock suspension here. You can adjust it. Check this out, look at that tail light. It's a Z, so that as you pull away from people, they know they got gapped by a Z. <laughs> you got the same theme continuing here. It's a chain drive, six speed transmission. I like how the tank tapers down here, so your legs can go in and you can grab the tank better with your legs. It does not have keyless ignition. You need a key. It's a standard Kawasaki key, it says Kawasaki on the key. Put it in. Let's check, Let's check out our TFT display. Boom. Kawasaki, yeah. Then you have lights on both ends. You have left turn signals, high beam, check engine, right turn signal, neutral, ABS, and traction control. In the middle, you have a digital tachometer. Tells you which gear you're on, your riding mode, your fuel gauge, time, and a bunch of other options here that you can toggle around with. As for your controls and handlebars on your left-hand side, at the bottom, you have the horn, your hazards, moving on the turn signals, high beam, low beam, and this is what you'd use to go through the menu or make selections and things like that. On the right hand side is your kill switch and your starter button. Now do these things do anything? Oh, these are buttons on either side as well. So if you press this button here, your odometer changes. You get odometer, trip A, trip B. What about this one on the right? Total time, battery life, fuel economy and range. If you press this button on the bottom, this toggles through the little screen down below instead of the right click. Now if you tap if you tap the bottom button on the top, it changes your odometer, trip one, trip B. So instead of the left instead of using the left click here, you can use the top button. So now change the, to change the riding modes, I have it at sport mode, so that's the highest mode. So and to change that again press and hold the menu selected button, but press the down down button, press and hold it, changes to road, press and hold it, it'll change to rain, press and hold it it'll go into rider so what rider mode is the rider mode is pretty awesome this is your customizable mode you can customize your power and your traction control and to change either of these you can use the button first you have to hit select and you'll start you'll see this is blinking then press press the up button it goes into f so i'm guessing full or low then you press select again it goes away to the next one for the traction control you have three do you have any more yeah so three two one or off. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about motorcycles of Greensboro? What what do we do here? I come here frequently, so let's have you're always welcome here. Thank man. you so always much. Always welcome. Thank you so much. Just like <laughs> just like all of our fellow motorcyclists and motorcycle mm -hmm. enthusiasts. Because at Motorcycles of Greensboro, we are not your atypical dealership and what I mean by a typical you know your stereotypical dealership mm -hmm. where you know to me the stereotype of a dealership is pushy sales guys and trying to close the deal today and yeah. you know you know and if I do this can you do that and no that's not who we are we're here because between Ned and Paul and Andrew uh, myself and you know now and anyways there's about probably a combined 300 year mm -hmm. motorcycling experience the professor is the track guy he's raced for many many years the guys who like Andrew who love off-roading and doing a bunch of other street riding stuff there's there's Paul with his fun stuff there's Pat there's Rourke I mean they've done a little bit of everything whichever class of motorcycling you might be into there's there's a guy in here who who does it or who loves it so come on down I'll put their website link in the video description below you got to come out check it out and it's an experience it's not just like hey you want a bike what kind of bike do I get you no it's an experience come on down check him out and when you do who should they say send them to you professor ah, bro they need to tell us that the broman sent them yes the uh, broman sent them absolutely <laughs> because then we we know they're part of the family already now we can start to abuse them as well oh yeah. right <laughs> Right, yeah, because that. because when you have the close relationship, yeah. you can start cracking jokes and yeah, 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 it happens. Yeah, it happens, yeah, it happens. It a happens. lot. But thank you, Professor. 
but thanks up, bro. I see the sun's out and it's going down. Yeah. Which reminds me, do you happen to know what time it is? Uh, bro, it's right o'clock, brother. <laughs> it is. I gotta and I'm gonna ride fast and take chances. Ride fast, take chances. <laughs> So if you're new to Bro Man, here, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. We put out content every week and your support would mean a lot. <laughs> Alright then, let's do our first test. Let's make a couple of few turns and see how this puppy maneuver, shall we? I think it should be just fine with the tiny wheelbase. With the 56 inch wheelbase, the low weight. Yeah, this should be just fine. Which it is. <laughs> U turns for days, baby. Which just means that it's time to do our second test. Our pull test. <laughs> it definitely has a good pull to it. Yeah, boy. <laughs> All right, moving on to the first impressions. Well, I'm seated quite upright, like you would on any naked bike. The seating position is upright, I like it. The handlebars are at a good position, you don't have to reach out for them. They're not really pulled back, it's like a standard naked bike. I'm at a stoplight, I can flat foot it easily, no problemo. I am 5'10", 31 inch inseam. Let's talk about the seating position. Uh, it does have that deep cut seat and we have the foot pegs here. Now, while I'm not really uncomfortable sitting on this bike, my hamstrings do feel a little cramped. A little bit. Uh, let's check out the brakes. Yup, no problemo. Nice bike to these dual discs. So this bike has 831 miles only. So it's pretty much brand new. Now this does not have a quick shifter. So yeah, which means it's the traditional clutch. There's no assisted shifting. All right, let's check out the suspension. Oh, okay. We went over We went over some railway tracks. I uh, didn't feel a thing. So good, good job on that suspension. Would this be a good bike for commuting? Yeah, I think so. Now, keep in mind, this does not have any storage space. Uh, no saddlebags, none of that. But if you have a backpack, it should be really good. Would this be good for touring? No, I don't think so. I mean, it has the upright seating position, but there is no wind protection. I'm getting what, tons of wind, upper body, lower body everywhere. No storage space, none of that. Uh, the seat is not the most comfortable seats that you would get, uh, that you can get, but, um, but you can always get aftermarket seats and aftermarket windshield, something like that. You could probably do some touring with it, but these are not meant for touring anyways. These are more of a fun bike, commuting bike, something to have fun with. Would this be a good bike for beginners? Yeah, no. No, 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 no. This is not a beginner friendly bike. I mean, it is. Yeah, the bike has a very lucrative uh, price point. It's under $10,000, but it's also putting out a decent amount of power. 124 horses and 73 foot pound of torque so i would say not the best beginner bike if you're brand new to motorcycling but if you have good throttle control or if you have some motorcycling experience maybe then yeah uh this could be it but if you're brand new to motorcycling then hell no talk about the cost of ownership shall we In conclusion, it doesn't have a ton of power like you would expect from a leader bike, but it's still got a lot of power, a lot of power to be happy with. And uh, yeah, once you get into its torque range, yeah, it has a great pull to it. <laughs> oh my God, this this bike is a great middleweight bike uh, to go commuting or go around town doing urban activities or go canyon carving with and yeah it's a it's a decent look it's a pretty good looking bike uh it's very nimble it handles quite well 
it's very peppy it's very peppy so if you're in the market looking for a motorcycle that's like in the middleweight class you want a naked or a hyper naked and um, you know these are kawasaki so these are meant these are built to last <laughs> forever so if you're in the market looking for a hyper naked or a naked bike and this is a hyper naked bike for your commuting or canyon carving or just to have some stupid fun with yeah uh, put the kawasaki z900 on your list well thanks for watching guys keep your knees in the breeze i'll see you soon bro out